Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60 and once again we're gonna have a look at a uh, hexagon pattern and one of the reasons, let's go back to the whole view, I'm spinning this round too much um, one of the reasons why I like to use computers for my stuff, I want the computer to do the equation for me or the math for me I just want to put in things and then work from that so the design intent of this is of course to make a parametric uh, design where I can change things. This is not very pretty, we're gonna have a look at that later. Let's make the six, let's make the wall thickness maybe two. And we could also change the size of things. I'm gonna close this for now um, and tinker around. Um, and the aim of this video is to show you the possibilities of using driven dimension outside of a sketch. Uh, driven dimension has been around for a while. Uh, firstly, we could use them at all, and then we could use them within the same sketch. Not super useful, but now we can use them outside of the sketch for things like pattern or other dimension in other sketches. So, uh, design intent, uh, I have a frame dimension, I have corner radius, I have like an edge dimension here, and the pattern. Uh, is driven by I can set the size of the circles and I can set the wall thickness between two circles. I'm not really setting any other dimensions and then I want Fusion to help me calculate the rest or make the pattern. So I have a new design here which I have forgotten to save. So let's start by doing that. Save. Let's jump down to my video map. What's today date? Uh, 23.11.11. Hexagon circle cuts something like that so we have a save always remember to save your file first of all that's the most important part this activates for auto save so uh, let's go back to the model and have a look i have some basic thing i want to set down so i'm going to do user parameters parameters of that we can do in sketch parameter too but i like to do it here so oh sorry i'm going to remove the parameters once and just have a look from the top I'm going to design from the top, so I have the X uh, axis in this direction, horizontally, and the Y direction vertically. So I'm going to use that just to remind myself in which direction I'm working. So frame, let's do the X, let's call it size maybe, that's a nice name. Uh, let's do that 120 millimeters. Let's do another user parameter frame i like to name things so i can sort them later so this is about the frame it's going to be the y and it's going to be size let's do that let's do it 80 a bit smaller today and um, what did we more have we had a frame edge let's make that three millimeters and i noticed i misspelled up here i'm going to add an e here so I have some of my basic dimensions, and of course I have my uh, circle OD, or D for dimension of the circle cast. Let's make those five millimeters. I have my circle, I'm gonna call it wall, the distance between two circles. Let's make that two millimeters for now. Is there anything more? Yes, I had corner radius, so I have a frame. Sorry, I have a frame. I have corners and corner and they have a radius of let's do 10 millimeters so uh, so everything got mixed up let's click on the name so things get sorted in alphabetic order so i'm like, quite pleased with this this is a good start so let's start sketching and see if we need any more parameters this is how i work i'm going to create a sketch i'm going to create it now from the top as we have the x and y axis here I'm going to make a simple rectangle, switch over to the center rectangle so I get things symmetric around the uh, radian point. And this is my Y dimension, tab over, this is my frame X size. I'm simply typing in Y and X, I know what my parameters are named, or I can type in frame and we start popping up the dimensions. That is our basic uh, frame. I do not... Uh, do fillets and sketches. I would do that with, with a feature. I forgot one dimension. I might need a frame. I really did not need to do this and I can just simply type it in in the extreme. Uh, let's make the three millimeters thick. Sort once again. It's so gonna hit E for extrude. And that was my frame thickness. Start typing any part of the user parameter. And uh, like that. And we have made 
a slightly thick slab. Let's open up our browser and look at things. Of course, you can put this in your component if you're going to be part of some type of assembly. I have auto hide, turn off on sketches, so let's hide that. I'm going to do fillet F on the keyboard. Select the four corners of the design like that. Let's give it then our corner radius or let's say a frame corner radius. Yes, please. So we have made like the basic frame. Now I'm going to make some cutouts. I'm going to create a sketch. I want to make sure I don't put it on the face of a part. I want to put it on the original plane. So I hold down the mouse button and select the XY plane. E for project. Simply going to put it in the edges. Hide the body for now. Uh, these are not going to be used. I'm going to mark them and turn them into construction geometry. This avoids uh, unwater profiles. O on the keyboard for uh, offset. Chain selection. Yes, all of these. It goes in the wrong direction. So I'm going to do minus and I call that uh, parameter frame edge. So ED and find frame edge and hit OK. You could do this in two extrudes if you want to do that. But now I'm going to split off the body. Split body, select the body, splitting tool, or a little sketch line in here. Simply OK, and I end up with two bodies. I'm going to hide the sketch. And what could you do? Because I want to keep the outer frame here, so I'm going to move the mouse over, see if that's body two. So I'm going to hide that for now. Can hide both of them. And remember, body one is the one I want to do the cutouts from. So now I'm going to create one more sketch. Create sketch. Once again, our XY plane. Now we're going to start sketching our holes. And as I said, you can think about this like a hexagon pattern or a triangular pattern. I'm going to do hexagons. I'm going to create polygons, circumscribe polygons, switch over to construction geometry. I don't need this profile. So I'm going to make a hexagon here somewhere and a second one out here. And I'm going to do some constraints. Uh, we need to decide on the orientation. So I think I'm going to make this horizontal like that. Make a coincident constraint between this point here and here. This is not really best practice. We could get some double lines here, but I don't want to break the hexagons of the polygon constraints. You can see the constraint in the middle here. We're going to make our two circles. We're going to make a circle here. Whoops. I need to mark that and change that to non-construction. Circle. Make sure construction turn off. These two circles are going to be two circles. They, of course, are going to be equal. They have the same size. D for dimension. I'm going to dimension here. And this was supposed to be our circle, OD. And then we need the dimension from here to here. I could do dimension uh, tangent to tangent, but I noticed something that gets a bit uh, strange. So I'm going to help myself by doing a construction line. Line. Construction line. From somewhere on this circle up to here, but I want this line to be perpendicular to the line is crossing, so I'm going to move around until, until I see the perpendicular constraint. Could do a couple of different versions. I'm simply going to do a midpoint between this one and here. This means that things now will, you can see, I can change the size of hexagon stuff. Like it's get a bit sensitive now, the model. You can see we can move them apart because we have not dimension this uh, dimension yet. For some reason, Fusion is showing a fully constrained sketch. I don't know why it does that sometimes. But I'm going to add a dimension of this line. And this was our circle wall. So let's see. Let's pull things. Use the mouse button to make sure nothing moves in a sketch. I'm going to finish sketch. And I'm going to turn on my body one. E for extrude. Select my two profiles. Come on, body. Come back. Uh, the distance I can use for thickness parameter once again, like that. And I'm going to hide that sketch. So, to not confuse myself, I can now do some naming. This here, hit F2 on the keyboard for your windows. This is the frame. This sketch here was the frame edge. And this one here was our circle cuts. So we have named our sketches just to find things a bit easier. So we now done our two holes and now we want to pattern them. So I'm going to create one more sketch. Yes, some of you are going to comment, oh, I can put all of that in one sketch. Yes, we can, but it gets quite messy. It's sometimes a really good idea to put things in different sketches. P for project, turn on my previous sketch. I want the two center points here. 
going to hit OK. Hide that sketch. And for now, to hide the body is just confusing. Going to do some lines, construction lines. So here we're going to construct our... I'm going to turn on the body again. <laughs> it's a bit easier to see. I now want to draw a line here, which I'm going to then drive a dimension from. This line should be the length from one center of a circle to where the next one would end up over here. So I'm going to do this, do this slightly outside like that. Make sure I get the horizontal vertical constraint. Escape to stop the line command. L again for second line command. So now I'm going to make a line in this direction. This line should be then, of course, where I want this to be. But it's so we're going to do it from here. We can use uh, our geometry to our help like that. So we made it from a midpoint. Gonna hide the body now because it's easier to see and use a midpoint constraint between this and this. Turn on our bow angle and have a look. So, whoops, sorry, not the escape button. So the next here is gonna end up over here, and in this direction, it needs to move up this dimension. So I can now use these two uh, lines here and create driven dimension. D for driven dimension. You can of course also do half width and then you need multiplied by two by create a dimension here. It's going to say create driven. Yes, please. I'm going to create a dimension here. Create driven. Yes, please. The problem is I can not directly use these. I need to make them favorite. So I'm going to go into change parameters. I like to make this immediately now. I haven't named this sketch yet, so I'm just going here and have a look. It's the last sketch. The good thing is, name a sketch, and I cannot find this sketch. I'm going to rename it later. And we can open up. We have two dimensions here. So we have a seven dimension that's in the X direction. So I'm going to name this pattern X. And of course, distance. So I know it's a distance. Tab over and name this pattern Y distance like that and i'm going to make these two favorites so they pop up up here so now i have the distance i need to do but i also like to make the number of instances of a pattern parametric so i'm going to create two user parameters pattern x count how many we're going to have so this of course needs to be no units so what is the expression uh, for a pattern, we need an integer, so we need to round it, so we're going to round it up. That's called CEIL, seal. We can click on the, uh, the function down here. Going to type in, of course, this is the full width of our frame, so that's the frame x size divided by our pattern in x distance, and that's going to round up to 18. and due to this is odd or even i like to add one extra so i know that i'm covering the full frame with holes hit ok do one more i'm gonna make a pattern y count do this with no units once again once again i'm going to use the function for round up seal and this is of course going to be y so going to be frame y size divided by y the pattern y distance and once again i'm going to add one for safety so i know the patterns are really covering everything I'm going to do okay I'm going to finish my sketch when fusion done its thinking i'm now going to rename it f2 one again pattern distance so i know this is for driving my pattern distance going to turn on our body and have a look so now we're going to do our pattern can do a lot of angle I'm simply going to hit s on the keyboard and find i've already put it up here or you type in rectangular pattern and find rectangular pattern what do we want a pattern we want a pattern a feature the extrude we made previous and the axis is going to be the x axis i'm going to select that first and then the oops, come on i want the y axis so we they selected the axis uh, the first axis selected was x axis so this is going to be x count this is going to be x we'll make sure i have spacing set of course here x uh, pattern x distance you can see it does in one direction but wrong we switch that over to symmetric do the same down here this is the y count and this is going to be our y distance and fusion starts to cry now because it's going to be too heavy 
gonna make it symmetric and as you can see this is one of the reasons why i added one if i hadn't added one it might not be sure it covered everything uh, adjust is the heaviest type of computer computer type when it we compute the pattern it does a full extrude of everything this works for me at least with optimize optimize is a face pattern so we're going to switch it to optimize and hit ok and watch a little padding in the cut gonna make our uh, frame edge visible combine our two frames hit ok have a look at our beautiful results we are ending up with one single body and for fun let's see if we can change our parameters we should be able to change the size so this is 150 it should update over yes thank you uh, the walls should be much thinner only one millimeter we may want much larger, larger circus with the 12 millimeters the frame thickness is five always play around and what's my frame edge there we are I bet that to be six millimeters so with a wider frame edge oh the walls look thin so we're going to do them three so with that said that's a uh, one way of using driven dimension outside the sketch for making a parametric pattern covering a frame like this I hope you can use it for some of your designs and with that, take care, see you around and goodbye.